Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first of many Kaldheim Modern Brew gameplay videos we're going to be doing here on the channel. If you are new here, hello, my name is Marin. Nice to meet you. And today we are kicking off Kaldheim here with some Tybalt's Trickery combo. I guarantee you we are not the only channel doing Tybalt's Trickery combo on day one because this deck is really hyped up and it's going to be one of the nutsest modern decks in that Kaldheim is going to bring to us. So this deck is a whopping seven spells and 53 lands. So it is quite a unique modern deck to say the least. The first part of this deck is you need to find a violent outburst. That is the only step. That is the only thing you need to do is find a violent outburst in your opener. There's four of them. It is somewhere between a 80 and 90% chance to get a keep that is going to be good. That is going to be a turn three. It does not matter how much you mulligan as long as you find one of these between 80 and 90%. That is going to then cascade you into your one singleton Tybalt's trickery. It is going to be a loss if you accidentally drew your Tybalt's trickery. It, not totally, you can wait until you have five mana to just hard cast it, countering Violent Outburst, but yes. The thing's gonna go on the stack off of Cascade and counter the Violent Outburst. You're gonna exile between one and three cards off the top of your library and then keep on flipping cards until you hit a card not named Violent Outburst, which is going to be an Emrakul. It's gonna go directly into play, but it's going to be cast. Therefore, we're gonna take an extra turn immediately, swing and make our opponent lose all their permanence and probably just win, or definitely just win. So it's very, very simple, very, very consistent, and this is going to be absolutely wild. Now, I know what you might be thinking, this deck is going to struggle against hand disruption and counter spells. And you're right, but hand disruption spells don't totally beat us. If they want to thought seize us and take our violent outburst, it's not gonna matter if we have a Nephalia Academy, because this is a handy little land you can play on the first turn if you're on the play. And it says if you were to get thought seized, basically, you can choose to put the card on top of your library. So hand disruption doesn't totally beat this deck. The second thing is counter spells. And yes, counter spells will be the biggest problem. That's gonna be your biggest game ender right there. And unfortunately, we do not have a way to deal with it, but there is a way if you wanted to transform your sideboard. There's a card called Beseju, uh, who shelters all, and it makes it so that the spell you cast off of it can't be countered. So if you wanted to run more Tybalt's Trickeries, you can then hard cast, you know, your Violent Outburst and hard cast your Tybalt's Trickery off of Beseju, countering that. It's going to take you five total mana, so it's a little bit slower, but counter spell decks are usually a little bit slower. And then you're going to need to run more Eldrazi Titans so that you do not whiff and hit another Tybalt's Trickery. That is what you're going to have to do to beat counter spells. It's kind of far-fetched, but I wanted to run more tech lands in my sideboard. You'll see in a minute. Let's get to it. Hope you enjoy. And before we get into it, a huge thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Their names have been scrolling down below. And if you would like to help monetize this channel so I can keep doing this kind of content, you can find the Patreon link down below in the description. But if you'd like to show your support for free, leaving a like, comment, and subscribe is very much appreciated. And an extra special shout out to The Real Shroom for being our top tier Patreon supporter for the month. And be sure to check out our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. For the best in MTG and MTG accessories, check out tcgplayer.com through our deck list link down below. Anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code that's on screen right now to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. This is some Tybalt's Trickery combo, 52 lands, three Emrakuls, four Violent Outbursts, and one copy of Tybalt's Trickery. The lands are all basically just RG lands or lands that will enter untapped, you know, like Tendo Ice Bridge, Aether Hub, Gemstone Caverns, Gemstone Mines. This is there to potentially get us the turn two. Uh, Nephilia Academy is there to protect us from Thoughtseize. Canopy lands and uh, temples um, for a little bit of looting action just in case we were to get Thought Seize and didn't have the Nephalia Academy and we needed to find a second Violent Outburst. So a little bit of lootage. And uh, we have a place set of Colony Garden. It's literally there just to make a chump blocker for aggro so that we don't die immediately to hyper mega ultra super aggressive decks. And then sideboard, we got uh, than all Draven lands. We're not running the whole blast zone package here. So we got a whole play craven. set of blast zone. Ooh, or no, we're, we're not running the whole Baseju package to help against counter spells. So we got a play set of blast zone. 
for potential aggro for potential uh, graphickers cage doesn't really stop us but you know what i mean three copies of bajuka bog for the grave four copies of ghost quarters for tron and four copies of radiant fountain for things like burn and blitz and with that we are ready to go on to the gameplay hope you enjoy got a game here against razzle flabbin and we are going to be on the draw here with some tybalt's trickery combo doesn't have a violent outburst so you know what that means mulligan mulligan that one will keep toss away tybalt's trickery toss away let's keep a backup violent outburst so let, let's toss away sunbake crayon no, no, we need the second, we need the second red source. So toss away Aether Hub. I'm expecting to go up against some mirror matches today. I don't know how many people are, are going to be playing this Tybalt's Trickery combo. Um, but I haven't seen, um, I haven't seen anybody else's lists. I don't know what anybody else is doing. This is a list I personally brewed. I don't know exactly what other people are doing. Because they, they could have discovered something for this deck that's just amazing that I didn't find. Because, like, everything that we're playing for the first two weeks on the channel here for Kaldheim is all stuff that I personally brewed and am playing in the first four days. So if you see, um, like, if you're watching the, um, a video that I posted two weeks after release, just know that I played it in the first four days of release. So there's a lot of things that that need discovering. All right, so I think this is a pretty good matchup. They really have no way to disrupt us unless they have Deafening Silence in their board. And um, they really have no way to disrupt us unless they have Deafening Silence. And they're not going to have that many permanents, so Emrakul will be able to just completely wipe them when it attacks. So turn this is a turn three win for sure. Sixth Sense, sure thing. They, they have two cards left in hand, soon to be three. Looking for that second land. This is quite possibly going to be the most busted deck to come out of Kaldheim. We'll see. The Emrakul enters, but not only does it enter, it gets the cast trigger. So it's pretty stupid insane. All right, they did find their, their forest, but there's not really many auras they have for those color for um, green. They got just Rancor and apparently six tenths. pretty fragile last god it's not that fragile it's it's not that fragile like this deck kind of gets really disrupted by um counter spells and thought seize effects but if you have an uh uh ne nephalia drown yard then thought seize or inquisition doesn't beat you and uh, if you have besage you if you wanted to run the besage you package then you then counter spells don't beat you so this deck has its ways to to win. All right, here we go. Violent Outburst. Red. Green. And whatever. Violent Outburst, Cascade. But I did bottom. I did bottom um, the Tibble Trickery, so will I not be able to hit it? Oh, there it is. There's the Emrakul. Three cards from the top. Cast without paying its mana cost. And boom. That's game. They have six permanents. I'm going to wipe them all out. It's stupid that it gives you a cast trigger. That's what makes this, this deck... Like, it. that's what turns this deck from decently okay to insane. Like, the fact that it gets the cast trigger. We're, we're definitely going to be seeing a lot of this deck in uh, top-tier gameplay. I can, I can tell you that for sure. But you never know. It might, it might not... Because the the technically the Goblin Charbelcher deck is insane, but nobody's really playing it anymore. It's just literally a deck where you play Charbelcher and activate it and win. It's it's that simple. But then again, that's seven total mana to do, whereas Tibble's Trickery combo is three total mana to do. You can't change your username in the mobile app. Pretty sure you can. You know another thing that people might start running to beat Emrakul? It's probably a sixth, uh, not sixth sense, that's the card in their graveyard. On Thin Ice, because O-Ring effects can kill Emrakul. Nice 1-1 one -one you got there. 
All right, sideboard time. Um, I don't think, I, I mean, Blast Zone's actually quite good here. Um, I think we're going to bring in Blast Zone. Blast Zone can totally wipe them in certain scenarios. So let's cut. Um, what are we going to cut? I don't think we need Temple of Mysteries because they're not really going to be thought seizing us or Temple of Abandons or whatever. So yeah, let's bring in the Blast Zones. To potentially save our butts. All right, submit. Are you, no, 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 no. Keep, keep these. We don't need Nephalia Academy here. We don't need Nephalia Academy here. On the nice Deputy Detention Reflector Mage. Yeah, all those things, but not Deputy Detention Reflector Mage because they're three mana. And that's the big thing. Because when you do this combo, Emrakul gets the cast trigger, so you take an extra turn and swing immediately before they get the chance to play anything. So they're going to lose all their lands. So it has to be something that's one mana. And the only thing would be on the nice and modern that I think that would deal with an Emrakul. No face rig. Um, not when we play Magic. Because when we play Magic, it's for YouTube, and YouTube hates the face rig, because I've tried it before, and the comment section is very rough. So, yeah, for YouTube, we just use face cam. Activating a vial in response? Yeah, that's true, but I don't think they'll have the time frame to get the vial up to three before we get our third mana. I don't think they will. I think it'll only go up to two by that time. All right, well, that's a violent outburst we're keeping. See if they got a deafening silence. Sure. If only we had a gemstone caverns. So actually, um, if you play a whole bunch of like basic lands in this deck, you can actually make this deck really, really cheap. Where the most expensive card would just be Emrakul, which has a lot of printing. So it's definitely not as expensive as, as it would be if it only had one printing. If Emrakul had only one printing, it'd be like a $80 card. But it has like, what, five or six different printings at this point? So I think it's like 20 bucks. So yeah, um, it's not that bad. And you only need like three and you can get away with two of them. So if you wanted to build this deck on a budget, you definitely could. Next expensive card would be Tibble Trickery, which I'm guessing will be like $5. The, the reason it's not Tibble Trickery wouldn't be super expensive because for this deck, you only need one. You only need one, and everybody who's going to play this deck only needs one copy. They don't need any more than one, unless they're running some wacky sideboard package, like the Basaji package I talked about in the intro. And for those here in the stream wondering what that is, it is a package where in the sideboard you run Moral Drowsy Titans, you run the other three copies of Tybalt's Trickery, and you run Basaju. Um, and Basaju is going to make it so when you cast an instant or sorcery off of it, it will be uncounterable. So you will be able to cast just hard cast the Violent Outburst and Tybalt's Trickery, and with the Basaju, and then, yeah. But it's going to take five mana. But if you're going up against a Counterspell deck, then, um, if you're going up against a Counterspell deck, then uh, it's it's fine, because they're usually not aggressive, and you'll, you'll have the time to get up to turn five. There's not really much that will stop you. All right. They got two mana. They're tapped out. There's nothing they can do about this. It is time. Smack face yet again. Ooh, blast zone. All right, violent outburst. You know, you know what it is. Give it to me. Boom. It was 47 cards deep. So I'm sure I'm trying to understand this. Does it like if it's the last card of my library that I cascaded into, will it have anything to find? Like, will it just reshuffle immediately? I'm not sure how that works. 
All right. Emrakul, extra turn. Let's do it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to blast zone. <laughs> I'm going to blast zone here, wipe out everything, and then attack with Emrakul. Then they, because they have seven permanents, so they'll definitely have none. <laughs> this is going to be hilarious. Come on, let me, let me go, let me go to my turn. Boom. <laughs> blast zone, amazing. And let's even swing with the plant to send a message. This deck is not fair. It's so not fair, dude. It's this is gonna be the brew killer. People playing to Tybalt's Trickery are just gonna prey on people who play brews because you have to have like top tier meta answers and whatever to be able to beat this deck. You gotta have deafening silence. Or like, what is it? Dispel? You gotta have like dispel people might run dispel on their sideboard now or like spell pierce or something. Yep, that's gonna be it. GG, taking down Boggles. Easy matchup, but you're gonna hear me saying easy matchup a lot because that's how it is with this deck. Got a game here against BAP2, and we're gonna be on the draw here with some Tybalt's Trickery combo. And we got the Tybalt, we got the Violent Outburst, so that's gonna be a keep. And there's a fly. Okay. Keeping it. Don't thought sees me, bro. Alright, still covered planes. So they could have Vaunte Nice. Looks like we're going up against Valkyrie Sisters. Oh no! The Gemstone Caverns was the very next draw, dude. It was the very next draw. Man. It was the very next draw. Wait. Radiant Fountain in Soul Sisters? Why? Okay, so it's Valkyrie proc. Martyr proc. Interesting. I I definitely think the Righteous Valkyrie belongs in Martyr Proc over Soul Sisters, but I would like to play it in Soul Sisters instead, just because I like that archetype a lot more. Um, Let's just chump block while we can, like just save a damage, because next turn that thing's probably going to end up having flying anyways. All right, and when we play the Tendo Ice Bridge, they're going to know exactly what's up. But are they going to be able to stop it? I don't think so. Seraph, you'll have that question answered in a future video I'm going to put out soon called FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions. Um, so just stay tuned for that on the YouTube channel. All right. Firelit Thicket, Path of Bravery. All right. We're going to make... Nope. Make green red. Violent Outburst. It is time. Trickery on Violent Outburst. It works out so perfectly. It works out so perfectly. All right. Give me that Emrakul. We can actually swing with Emrakul twice and not even kill. That's hilarious. So I think that uh, Blast Zone is definitely going to come in here. And Nephalia Academy is going to come out. All right, sweet. Sideboard time. Bring in Blast Zone. Bring out Nephalia Academy. And I could bring in Radiant Fountain just for a little bit of life gain potential. Don't think I need to, though. Yeah. Hemrickle's just a lousy 15-15. Doesn't even two-hit KO. Was wanting to play against you? Oh, yeah, you're welcome to play against me if you'd like. But, um, for to- Actually, today, I kind of- Doubt that's a good idea playing against people in chat because they know what I'm on and they know to just bring a Thoughtseize counterspell deck, like literally Demir fairies or something. And so, yeah, I don't think it's a very good idea today. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to mulligan this one, even though it's got a blast zone. We never keep a hand without a violent outburst.
Mulligan. 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 There we go. Keep. Toss away. Oh, we had a gemstone caverns too, but we have to put four cards in the bottom. So we can only keep uh, two lands. So I don't think I can keep gemstone caverns. So toss away gemstone caverns. Toss away blast zone. Toss away Carpelusin Forest. And toss away Tendo Ice Bridge. No, Sunday Canyon. All right, we have 50 lands to draw into. Are we really gonna get mana screwed? Because I am the master of mana screw. You've never seen any other YouTuber get mana screwed as much as I have, so watch. Even in a 50 potential lands to draw here, watch me get screwed, watch. <laughs> Didn't happen, thank goodness. Where's your, what happened to your snow-covered planes? I thought they were gonna have on the nice to counter our Emrakul. There's the Martyr. But watch me draw Emrakul, Emrakul here. Watch, it's just gonna be my luck. Emrakul, Emrakul, and then Tibble's Trickery is gonna exile the next Emrakul. Ooh, that's a good draw. Oh yeah, do you draw the trickery? That's that's a good that's a good proposal there. I might draw the trickery on accident. Um all right, ghost quarter, we will go and grab a, a basic forest. They thought they were going to screw us there, but nope. Nope. All right, well now first time. All right, opponent, do you have the answer? Emrakul, cast trigger. Do you have a way to deal with it? For one white mana. You should have cast silence in response to Tibble's trickery. Now that would have been hilarious. What if people start sideboarding silence? So in response to Tibble's trickery, they, they silence so that when, they, when you get the Emrakul, you can't cast it. Or would that get around silence because it's like auto cast? All right, we take down Modern Proc super easy peasy. Again, if you're going up against a deck that does not have counter spells, you are going to win. That's the disgusting, nasty thing about Tibble's Trickery combo. Got a game here against Crypto Real, and we're going to be in the play here with some Tibble's Trickery combo. Oh, Jatasi and Nick1122. I did not see your guys' follows an hour ago. Thank you so much for the follows. All right, um, Mulligan this, they have Luris as a companion. That one's going to be a keep. And being on the play, it's definitely amazing that we got Nefalia Academy. Definitely, uh, especially against a, um, a Luris deck, because they're definitely going to want to Thought Seize us. Czech Republic, your homeland. Yeah, I know Czech Republic, but I didn't know Czechia. I didn't know where Czechia was. <laughs> Is, so it's the same thing as Czech Republic. Memnite, Bobble. Oh, is this a Berserker deck? Oh, no, no, it's equipment. All right. So we don't have to fear no thought seizes and such. Yeah, next turn should definitely be the win. Unless they literally go Pierceal Paladin and then zero drop, zero drop, zero drop, zero drop, zero drop. So they have a million things to sacrifice to it, to the Emrakul swing. That would be the only thing here. But they played an um, Ink Moth Nexus, so there's no way they're playing a SRAM or a... They're not going to play a SRAM. There's no way they're playing a Pierce still here. So, yeah, we should definitely have it. I don't think they have any possible way to deal with this right now. Perennial Plating, and let's, let's get this bread. Let's grab this Gluten. Second card from the top, cast Emrakul, take an extra Toyn, and bash your face. Sorry, not sorry.
Wait, what did I mispronounce? What are you talking about? I mispronounced everything. We didn't have a one word name in the United States. Dude, I have so many. Every time I play Luka on the channel, everybody in the comments on YouTube is like, it's Luka. I can't stand you saying Luka. But dude, I'm telling you, it's got two Ks. If it was Luka, it would have one K. Like the word Luka, L-U-C-A. If you had two Cs, it'd be Luka. Just like the word, like the word yucca, it's got two C's. So if I see two K's, you best believe I'm gonna say Lucca. So if it if it was pronounced Luca with two K's, it'd be Lukka, Lukka. You'd have to say the second K in there. Like I don't know what people are saying, and everybody's so adamant about it being Luca. <laughs> All right, they scoop it up. Uh, blast zone might be pretty solid here. I can put blast zone. In, oh wait, no, I couldn't put blast zone on zero. Never mind. Um, I could put it on like do it on one to kill Colossus Hammer, which is decent. But I think I don't really need to worry about that. I think I should just run it right back. Yeah. Yeah. See, scratch proves my logic. It's it's yeah. It's my theory. It's my theory. I know if somebody's gonna like link me a a like Magic the Gathering conference of like the creators of of Luca and have, show me them saying it like Luca so that they can prove that the creators named it that way, but then I would go and question the creators. Then why did you put two Ks? Why did you not put one K if it's Luca? And now somebody said put it on Google Translate, so we're gonna put it on Google Translate. And somebody said that on google translate it does say um that it does say uh lucas so here we go let me let me put on my headphones so i can hear this luca see it says luca on google translate and i don't know why luca 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 but if i put if i put two c's what does it say luca it still says luca with two c's okay well then what if i put Yucca. Yucca. See? Why? Why does it do look it makes no sense. It's Yucca. It's Yucca when it's Y U C C A, but when it's L U C C A, it says Luca. Luca. Why? I I really think Google Translate's broken on that one. Because you put L U C C A, it's Luca. You put Y U C C A, it's Yucca. Why? <laughs> I don't understand that logic. All right, there we go. We're going to keep that one. Bottom Emrakul. I'm going to put four cards on the bottom, right? Put Gemstone Caverns, Tendo Ice Bridge, and Mountain. Google's hacking me. Is that. Wait, does Juice really have a Keck W? No way. Juiceps has a Keck W. <laughs> That's hilarious. Juiceps is a meme. Perennial Plateau. What's that one, though? Keck weight. Yeah, Juice just, uh, it was his birthday a couple days ago. Happy birthday to Juiceps. English is like three languages in a trench coat and it fears no god. English is the most screwed up language ever. Like... If you look at the English language compared to every other language, it's so drastically different. Just every every word is backwards and it's just it's weird the way sentences are formed in English. <laughs> Cuz every time I like English is the only language I speak. So when I look at a different language and everything is like the words are backwards, I'm like no, it's not backwards, it's forwards. It's just that in English everything's backwards. English is the different one. All right, we're going to violent alpers here see if they got an answer.
Give me that Emmy. Do they have they have enough sackables, but they are they're not gonna kill us with a one one. I doubt they will. I even have a backup violent outburst, so I can literally just give my Emrakul plus one plus O for no reason. I don't even know what that means, Clara. <laughs> All right, opponent scripts it up. As easy as one, two, three, Emrakul. That's how it is in most matchups. Got a game here against Ashante, and uh, we're going to be on the draw here with some uh, Tybalt's Trickery combo. So far, we haven't ran into any opponents playing new cards, except maybe the Righteous Valkyrie person, which we didn't see. All right, Mulligan. That one's a keep. Bottom Emrakul. Done. Oh, you're redeeming a fursona. All right, you ready, Last God, for this questionnaire? I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I want you to answer to the best of your abilities. You ready? Question number one. Do you love the ocean? Do you want to just live down there with the fishies and the coral and the and the crabs and the sea creatures and the dolphins? Do you love the ocean that much? Do you love sailing the ocean? Very no. All right. Next question is: Do you love traveling? Could be out of town, could be out of out of state, could be out of country. But do you love traveling? Yes. All right. Next question is: Do you um? Are you social or antisocial? Ancient stirrings. You got 146,000 points. That's similar to what I have in VB Wolf's chat. I have so much points in VB's channel, but nothing to do with them. Because <laughs> he doesn't have uh, many redeem award things. Uh, more social than not. So somewhat social. All right. Are you active or lazy? So it looks like we're going up against some kind of eggs deck. It looks like KCI active. All right. Are you more of an outdoorsy person or an indoorsy person? All right. Violent outburst time. Boom. I didn't even need to use Tibble's, uh, I didn't even need to use the, the Tendo Ice Bridges thing. Outdoorsy when convenient, uh, you enjoy the woods, so weed. Opponent scoops it up to the Emmy, and against them, I don't think we need anything. Bajuka Bog I could see being maybe useful. I'm just gonna run it right back though, I don't see myself needing any of that junk. Um, next question is, are, do you prefer cold weather or warm weather? Cold? All right. Are you nocturnal or more of a daytime person? In Diva's channel, you're nearing the 50K bridge. I, I uh, have like 20K in Diva's channel because I kept, I kept redeeming her uh, Hey Yeah Yeah song and her ukulele songs. So I wasted all my points. Yeah, it, it is broken. Hi, Seraph. There's not anything to hide here. There's no beating around the bush. It's broken. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> That's how I felt about Goblin Charbelch here when the flip lands were a thing in the last set. Which it is broken, but nobody's playing it anymore. We played against um, MTG Tavern, who was playing a Belcher Living End deck. It's interesting. You should go check it out on his channel, um, an MTG Tavern on YouTube. If you want to see an interesting Charbelcher living in brew. All right, uh, Twilight is your best time, so whenever th that fits. I have no idea what time of the day Twilight is, but I'm just going to assume when the skies are gray. Um, so that could either be like 
five, six in the morning, or it could be, um, you know, five, six in the evening. All right. Next question is, um, are you into more cutesy stuff or are you into more manly stuff, like cool stuff? Or are you into like, uh, like kawaii, like anime weeb stuff? Like, you know what I mean? That's going to be a mulligan. Mulligan. There we go. We'll keep that one. We're going to toss away Kendo Ice Bridge. What are we going against? Yeah, we don't need Colony Garden here. That one we'll keep. Manly stuff. All right. Okay, what kind of uh, video games and or games are you into? Do you like more futuristic stuff like shooters, like FPS games? Or do you like the more fantasy stuff like WoW and like Skyrim and games where you use magic and their swords? Dark Souls magic, high fantasy RPGs. Yep, there we go. All right, next question is, um, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite color? Crimson. All right. Um, I'm trying to remember questions that I'm supposed to ask here, but I don't. I don't quite these often let me see um see everybody just points to dragon every it's so easy to point somebody to dragon because because to put it all together you're you're kind of an outdoorsy person um who's somewhat somewhat um um social you are active you love to travel and if you love to travel that means you fly you like the cold weather red is what your color is so it's like you're a red dragon like you like fantasy so dragon over anything if it was not if you weren't into fantasy then i wouldn't say dragon i would say something more like red jay but yeah i think uh let's just go for the combo here i don't know Yeah, opponent literally just scoops it up to land, 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 violent outburst. <laughs> it's that easy, dude. It's that easy. It's so broken, man. It's so broken. Got a game here against Expos fan. We're going to be on the draw here with some violent, not violent outburst, with some Tybalt's trickery combo. It's going to be a mulligan. Um, that one is also going to be a mulligan. Everything but the red. Yeah, everything but the red. If we didn't say... If we didn't say you were red, what, what would you be? That one we're going to keep. All right. So toss away. Colony Garden. Tendo Ice Bridge. Tendo Ice Bridge. And as soon as we mulligan down to four and play a red green land, opponent probably knows exactly what we're on. But they have... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Turn of all yields. I might want to scoop here to a Thoughtseize. Okay, Swift Spear. All right, we're good. So they're on just regular prowess. Play a colony garden for chumps. A deep blue. So like some kind of Egyptian lynx. You know, one of those sphinx lynxes. That's what you would be. You would be like... But like lynxes, are lynxes even social? Are, I feel like felines are very, very much individuals. I feel like they are not the friend type. That's that's how I feel about felines. All right, red, green, whatever. Emrakul and attack. Like, can they do anything about it? I I don't think so. Emrakul time. And you know what time it is. All right, sideboard against uh, Rakdos Prowess. Blast Zone's not bad, but I definitely do want to keep Nephalia Academy. Um, Radiant Fountain's quite good. So I could cut something for it, but I like, I like um, Colony Garden here for chumps. Maybe I just cut some Aether Hubs to bring in some Radiant Fountains just in case we're, our life is in danger. 
I'm down. Tibble trickery have all three emeralds on top and exile three. <laughs> that would be, I would actually love for that to happen because it would actually be amazing to see that. <laughs> so what are we deeming last God? So you knew, you knew what your, you knew what your Sona was going to be all along last God. You're going to be a Lynx. I could see that though, because your name's the last God and isn't uh, that Beerus character from Dragon Ball Z, isn't he a Lynx? He's one of those Anubis characters. He's a Jackal, right? Is he a Jackal or a Lynx? I have no idea what Beerus is. Let me, let me look it up. What animal is Beerus based off of purple feline so he is a god of destruction i don't know they just say he's a feline i'm gonna type in what animals beer is based off of links and see if any keywords come up there cornish rex cat all right i'm gonna search what a cornish rex cat is All right, I can see it. But yeah, so you're something like Lord Beerus. All right, we're going to mulligan this one. Mulligan this one. Mulligan this one. Mulligan this one. Keep that one. Um, We have the bottom four cards, so I don't think I have the... um. I don't think I'll be able to play the gemstone counselor. Will I? Let me see. I think I can. Because I would be keeping three cards. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to play Gemstone Caverns here. So bottom Gemstone Caverns, bottom Tendo Ice Bridge, Forest, and Sunbay Canyon. All we need to do is find an untapped color source, which should be very easy, especially since I'm scrying here. Um, please don't thought seize me. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let it go. The, the jig is up, they know what we're on. And I could potentially top deck another Violent Outburst, so it's not over till it's over. Yep, there it is. Uh, Colony Garden's pretty good. Radiant Fountain to the bottom. Thunder Sass is getting one as well. You already sound like a cat, Thunder Sass. You already sound like a cat. Um, oh, Pong, there's another Violent Outburst. <laughs> um, all right, please don't thought seize us. Okay, Thunder Sass, you ready for your questionnaire? So here we go. Question number one, are you into the ocean? Do you love the ocean? The, the sea creatures and the marine life and all the beauty of the sea? Is it just where you want to spend your life? Yeah, Thunder Sass is definitely your Sona's name. Just chump block. You do like the ocean? Sweet. <laughs> yeah, 12. That's a that's a mistake that uh Quent made. <laughs> uh Quent uh called her that. <laughs> it was it was funny. Um, all right, next question is, do you love traveling? Could be out of your city, could be out of your state, could be out of your country, but do you love to travel? All right, Radiant Fountain. Red, green, whatever. Rip opponent. We drew another one. It's called the Thoughtseize bug. Learn it. There's a bug on Moto where if you get something Thoughtseize, you're likely to top deck another copy of it. It's weird, but it's true. It's been happening for years. Or I think it's been uh, going on for a couple years now, the Thoughtseize bug. Oh no, Clara. You better delete that quick. Not really? Not really into traveling? All right. Are you more, are you active or lazy? I mean, are you social or antisocial? The next question is active or lazy. So yeah, first question, social or antisocial. Next question, active or lazy. 
Opponent scoops it up. Oh, we didn't get to see their chat message. They're gonna probably like curse us out or something or be all salty or say hi YouTube or something. <laughs> all right, GG. And we are now 5-0, and oh, and it was a very easy 5-0. <laughs> Easiest 5-0 of my life. Got a game here against MB Quart 150, and we're gonna be on the draw here with some Tybalt's Trickery combo in Modern. That is a mulligan. That would have been awesome if it had the Trickery because it had the Gemstone Caverns. Could have been a turn two. Mulligan. Mulligan. Nicobolos Avatar is, or the Ugin Avatar is kind of scared me like they're going to have Thoughtseize because usually people who have that usually have Thoughtseize. All right, keep on mulling. That one will keep in. So I have to bottom three cards. So I think I can afford to keep the Gemstone Caverns, right? You can bottom Colony Garden, one of our Gemstone Caverns. And then say I bottom a land. I think the odds are definitely in our favor here. Yeah, I'm gonna put in Gemstone Caverns, pitching Gemstone Mine, and all I have to do is top deck a land. I have 50 lands to top deck into. Oh no, oh thank goodness they didn't have a Thoughtseize. All right, Temple of Abandon. I'm gonna try to scry into a second Violent Outburst because I might need it. I might need it. Calling Garden to the bottom. All right, it's gonna be a turn two here. Yeah, that's what I said, Thunder. <laughs> Deafening Silence would slaughter this deck. But again, isn't it like, when you Cascade, is it not optional? Do you, can you still cast it? Even around Deafening Silence? I know Deafening Silence states you can't cast, but you have no option. Cascade makes you cast, right? All right, so we could still lose here to a Force of Negation. But Sig Knight's Whisper is definitely a Grishel brand deck. All right. Violent Outburst time. That's a turn to Emrakul. Don't you dare have Force of Negation. I doubt it. Like, literally in a Grishel brand deck, there's no way they're going to have Force of Negation. Come on. Oh, man, I kind of feel like they got it. They're sandbagging. <laughs> they are sandbagging. Emmergle. Yes. <laughs> and look, luckily for us, they're exactly at 15. How convenient. Thank you, opponent, for fetching and shocking and nights whispering. No, 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 opponent, you thought you were going to have a turn. But this thing time walks us. Yeah, this, I, I doubt this deck's going to stay legal for much longer. Like, maybe they won't. Maybe Watsy's just going to kill Modern because they they did it to Pioneer by not banning Thassa's Oracle. So what if they keep Tibble's Trickery around because they want to sell Kaldheim booster packs? And uh, then this deck becomes running rampant. It could happen. It has happened in the past, and it could happen again. But yeah, it's literally three mana to time walk plus Emrakul. Like, it's... It's crazy. All right, so against Grishelbrand, I probably don't need Bajookabog because when they put Emer when they put Grishelbrand in the grave, they're going to get it back immediately, probably. So I won't have the time to Bajookabog. So I think I just run it right back and um, try to get Nephalia... Academy in my opener. Although they might thought seize me on the first turn, so it might not matter anyways. It only really matters if you're on the play. Cascade is a May and Tybalt's is a May. No, no, no. Not like May counter target spell. I'm talking like when you cascade into a spell, can you just say, no, I don't want to cast it and toss it in the graveyard? Or toss it back in the bottom of the library? Or does it you do you have to put the cascaded spell on the stack? Let me read a Cascade card. Hold on. It's not letting me zoom into it for some reason. It Okay, hold on. Let me... All right, what's um, Throws of Chaos? 
When you cast the spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast it. All right, yeah, it's a may. So deafening silence does stop it. Oh, we have the Nephalia Academy, but it's we're on the draw. And also we don't have the tibble, the, the violet now first. Because this opponent's definitely going to have, um, is it charm? Which is technically a counter spell. So yeah, can get around it. There's Nephalia Academy too. Oh my goodness. All right. Um... Please just play a play a Temple of Malice or here because they usually play Temple in in uh, Grizzle Brand decks. No, don't do it. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, give me, give me, give me Nevalia. Go. Yes, we're protected. All right, no more, no more hand disruption. For those who don't know what this card does, if a spell or ability an opponent controls would cause you to discard a card, you may put it on top of your library instead. So now we're not worrying about hand disruption. What we are still scared about is it charm. Is it charm could still very well happen. Knight's Whisper. And also we could just die next turn to their combo, so we'll see. But we're close. Yes, Clara, that is a good lesson to be learned. All right. Stomping Grooms, go. All right, are we dead? Let's find out. Simeon Spirit Guide. One, two, three. What? Oh. Okay. Well, I guess we have to wait until we draw Basic Forest. Um... Blood Moon in a Grixis deck with nothing but fetches and shocks. I mean, I guess we have some time. I don't see them doing anything either anytime soon. But they could be a breach. They could have brought in Breach. I think when you bring in Blood Moon, you bring in Breach. So you can get around it. But yeah, that's awkward as heck. We do have two forests. So it's a two and it's a, basically a one in 31 chance. <laughs> So it'll happen eventually. So it's like a 3% chance we find it. World Spine Worm, they shoaled, sure. Want to see you get to 15 mana on heart? Oh, dude, it can happen. We're we're a fifty three land fifty three land deck. We're fifty two land deck. We can potentially get up to fifteen mana before they find their basic swamp. Because I am for sure hitting my land trap every turn. Whereas they can potentially whiff. We just need nine more turns. I I could theoretically see it happening. Although if we draw gemstone caverns, it's a whiff because it's legendary. They have four breaches. Yeah, that's true. They could have it right now off the Simeon Spirit Guide. All right, that's seven mana. All right, is it breach time? Let's find out. Oh, don't tap, please. Yes. All right, no tap. So this thing is literally would just die. It has no counters on it. If it never had counters, then it, it's just a do nothing piece of junk on the field. If it doesn't have any counters on it, because in order to have to sack it, you have to tap it. All right, that is six, seven, eight, nine, six more turns, six more turns, just six more turns.
This would be the most glorious win ever. Okay, that's a whiff because it's legendary, unfortunately. Five more turns. Five more. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, Rito. Thank you so much for the host. I've never given you a shout out before. Let me give you a shout out. Harplusin. You're playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Assassin's Creed's a cool game. I, I played the second one and only the second one. Assassin's Creed 2, I had a lot of fun with. It was really, it was really fun. Um, didn't play any after that, though. I, I'm trying to remember his name. It was like Enzo Ferrari or something like that. There's the breach. World Spine Worm. All right, the question is, are we going to find a forest off the top? Forest? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, we were three turns away. Just three turns away. Dang it. So close. Maybe we need to run more basic forests to get around Blood Moon. Yeah, you know what? That's actually a pretty solid idea. If I was going to build this deck again, I'd put like six basic forests. We don't need basic mountains. I just put all the forests just to make sure we can get around Blood Moon. A solid idea. Because Blood Moon is very much a thing. Throw in some wooded foothills. Um, yeah, I could see. I could see wooded foothills. It's T O O, last god. I don't mean to mean to mean to be one of those grammar peoples, but it's T O O there, not T O. That's the most triggering like misspelling for me is is two and two. T O and T O O. You put T-O-O -O in sentences where the word also would make sense. So you could say, throw in some wooded foothills also. If, if also makes sense, then it's T-O-O. -O. That's, that's your lesson. All right. Um, I do have Nephalia Academy and I'm on the play, but I don't have the thing, so we got a mulligan. We have Nephalia Academy and we're on the play and we got it. All right. Okay, cool. Toss away Colony Garden doesn't really do a whole lot here. Estus flasks, your versus your fight. <laughs> well, that one's obvious. That's an easy one, Claire. All right, play Nefalia Academy, so no more Thossies. I don't know what Ergo Sum is, but I've seen it in a song title before. Like a metal song title. All right, Colony Garden. Next turn is the turn. As long as they don't hold up a spell piercer and is it charm? Okay, now there's questions that need answers here. Do I hold up Violent Outburst and do it at the end step or whatever? Okay, no, 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 they didn't play a blue source, so I'm definitely going for it right now. Definitely. The only thing that would kill us is if they had Force of Despair. All right. This is my chance. No Force. Please. Pilly cheese. Are we getting them GG's? Uh, there it is. Emrakul. 
We did it, boys. That was scary. Combo v combo matchup, but this is the more consistent one, boy. GG. I should have swung with the plant for zero. <laughs> All right, GG, taking down Grishlamrand. Got a game here against Kyle53F, and we win the die roll. Gonna be on the play here with some Tibble Trickery combo. That's gonna be a mulligan. That's gonna be a mulligan. You like Turbo Depths as well? I, I like Turbo Depths. I, I respect that. It's a one of a kind deck, it does something very interesting. I think it's easy to answer, but it's, it's interesting. Cause you'll die to like a swords to plowshares, um, dude. Where where is it? No, no, we're mulliganing to one. There it is. All right, we're keeping take two on the on the on the zero lander. All right, we just gotta draw lands in a fifty-two land deck. We have fifty-two lands to draw into. Seven whiffs. Can we hit three lands in a row? Oh man, we're gonna get burned out. I think the opponent knows exactly what's up right now. Eidolon? What's happening? Are we going up against an Iron Crag feet deck? All right, Tendo Ice Bridge, one more, one more land. Come on, can we, can we get the mulligan to one win? The mulligan to one. Please. The mean spirit guide, Chandra. Sure. It's not a blood moon, so we're good. If it's a blood moon, we would be screwed. Stomp our face, sure. Please, land. No! No! I knew it! I knew it'd be a tap land. Please, opponent, have mercy. Don't drop a blood moon. Please, just this once in your life, do not drop a blood moon. Please. Chandra, you can ask all the top. Just don't have it be a blood moon, girl. Don't do it. A bridge? Oh man. If it was a bridge. It's br we're going up against Pyro Prison too, so the bridge potential is very high. If they got SSG, they can go car and grab a bridge and play a bridge. Stomping ground. Alright, that's interesting. Why is it why stomping ground? What what's what are they doing? There <sighs> was right there, man. It just had to be a tap land. It just had to be a tap land, dude. It was right there. We almost got the mulligan to one. Mulligan. There we go. Deep. Bottom tibble's trickery. Temple, Scry, Nephalia to the bottom. Just don't send me and Spirit Guide out a thing. No, no, don't do it. Just be a rabble. Chalice on, I don't care. I don't care about a Chalice on one. I don't care about a Chalice on one. Hey, Dinosaurus, 
our de dis dis Nessosaurus. Thank you for coming from YouTube. I really appreciate you coming out here. Okay. Violent outburst time, and that should be all she wrote. Do you have an answer? Instant speed and snaring bridge? Yeah, like, I, I don't think they knew what deck we were on. I don't think they knew. They probably should have just saved that for a blood moon. So now they know the jig is up, and they're going to be on the play. And being on the draw against the blood moon deck with rituals, now that's going to be a challenge. All right, they scoop it up. Being on the draw against the ritual blood moon deck is going to be very much in their favor. Like, very much in their favor. Like, very, 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 very much. I'm going to need a basic forest, and if I don't have a basic forest, I probably die. How may a deck list of mine be considered? Unfortunately, uh, Desnessosaurus, um, I only do donation decks now because of the amount of deck lists I get. If it was back in the day, I would consider for free, but now, now due to the fact that the channel's grown and, and more deck lists are coming in, I can only really play the decks of those who pay for it. It's a very sellout thing of me to say, but it's the harsh truth. I, I don't like that that's a thing, but it has to be a thing, unfortunately. All right, that's going to be a mulligan. You know, we really could also use a gemstone caverns in our opener. Going for the turn two could help a lot, because if they don't have a ritual, we could potentially sneak it in there before they can get up to a uh, blood moon. Can you say hi, T Brazil? Hi, T Brazil. All right, Mulligan. Hello from the United States. Nice to meet y'all. Surprisingly, a lot of, uh, of my viewer base is from Brazil. And that, that really surprised me when I started YouTube. I didn't expect that to be a thing. But aside from uh, the United States and the UK, Brazil is next. And I didn't expect that. It's cool to see that, like, every every single community I look into, where it be a metal community, Pokemon, just music in general, Magic the Gathering, this game, that game, Brazil always, like, way up there. And it, it really surprised me. I didn't know that Brazil was that, like, big of a, um, you know, very, I don't know what word I'm going to, I would use to describe here, but, yeah, I just didn't expect it. That's really cool. All right. We're mulliganing to two to one. Oh my goodness no am i gonna mulligan to zero mulliganing to zero i'm keeping a zero land i'm mulligan to zero let's see if we can you know i i've won on mulligans to one i've, I've i think i've won on a mulligan to one once before in my life it was on the channel it was literally just a few months ago but let's see can we win on a mul to zero this would be the, the feat of a lifetime. Uh, Canada on your viewership list? Let me look. All right, analytics. Um, reach? Hey, how do I how do I see the advanced advanced mode? Geography. All right. Um, United States. Oh no no no! UK is nowhere near the top. United States is forty point eight percent of my viewership, and then next is Italy. Did not expect Italy with six point seven percent, and then third is Brazil with 5.7%, and then Germany, then Spain, then Canada at 4.4%. So the Magic the Gathering community in Canada is not that big, apparently. Oh wait, they have a Chalcedon too, so it's over. They might be a Tibble's Trickery deck of their own. 
All right, I can't beat the Chalice on two, so that's gonna be game. Maybe I should have brought in Blast Zone, but I don't know. I wouldn't, because of Bloodman. So yeah, Prison is also gonna be difficult because Blood Moon and Ensnaring Bridge. Although I, there is one way we can deal with Blood Moon, and that's having more forests. That's something that we have to talk about in the outro. Hey everybody, just a quick note. You saw that game that just happened right there. That was a legitimate loss that can be remedied very easily if you just put Forest in your deck. However, the following footage will be a montage of what happens when we go up against Counter Magic, which like I said in the intro, is kind of impossible for us to beat unless you transform your cyborg to run the Beseju package that I mentioned in the intro. Let's roll the footage. Oh, but they could have remand. They could have remand. Oh no. Please don't have remand, I forgot. No! Dang it, now I have to wait until I have five mana so I can hard cast this one and then... and then Tibble Trickery it, so yeah, two more turns. Yeah, they're holding up Remand now. I have to just go for it though, like I have to just go for it, I have no choice. There it is, I'm just gonna concede. Alright, yeah. Counter spells, like I said, are the biggest bane of our existence. It, we can beat literally anything a anything anything thought seize decks aggro tribal tron anything except counter spells and that's what uh i said that you could run that basaju package for basaju would definitely help although we would have to wait until we have five mana anyways and against storm they would be able to storm off and win before we can do that and storm is just like the perfect deck to beat us because they also are a combo deck that has counter spells which you don't run into often and i wouldn't consider a um is it breach deck a um combo deck i mean it's, it sort of is but it's also slow you have to wait they have to wait until five mana as well so you actually have a chance but storm just goes off like as early as turn three so it's just the combination of being able to combo off as well as having counter spells that's just something that no other deck has so Definitely our worst matchup by far. No, I don't want to see blue mana, please. Just get it like a temple garden. Oh no. Selfless spirit. All right. Looks like we win. <laughs> Unless they are running a uh, force of negation. All right. Red, colorless, green, violent outburst. Let's see. Force of negation or not. Nah. Turn two, Emrakul. There it is. We're getting the cast trigger. It's over, boy. Dami's is fine. We can just wait till we got four mana. And now they have Mausoleum Wanderer as well. So I'm going to have to wait till I have like literally five mana. All right. So I'm going to Violent Outburst now. Oh, that's right. I'm going to Cascade into my trickery and then it's going to fizzle and go to the graveyard. And that's my only one. All right. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we actually mulligan to zero. We actually mulligan to zero. Okay, that's gonna be a scoop. GG. Again, counterspell decks, man. They're the bane of our existence. Uh counterspell like like I said, we we can beat Dotsies and everything else. Counterspells is the one thing that's gonna give this deck trouble. Oh man. Well. GG. All right, I can still I can still win if I draw another violent outburst if they remand this. Yeah, all right. So I can still draw another violent outburst and just hard cast for five. But if they play it to fairy, we're just dead. There it is. Can't beat that. GG. Counter spells, man. I told you, counter spells. We can't beat them. We beat everything else, but we can't beat counter spells. Please, please fetch, 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 fetch. No, they didn't fetch. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Don't, oh no, they have a remand, dude. Oh wait, they're remanding the wrong spell. Are they waiting till we cascade? Dang it, dude. It's happening. Okay, technically, technically I could still draw another another Violent Outburst and try again. It's not over, but they're definitely going to have like Cryptic Command, Archmage's Charm, 
Snapcaster, another man. Like, it's it's just over. Okay, I'm literally straight up just gonna go for it. If it gets countered, then whatever. All right, you got the goods? There it is. GG. Counter spells can't beat them. Can't beat the counter spells. All right, let's talk about some Tybalt's trickery combo. The deck is insane. It is totally, totally nuts. Not even going to try to hide it. Although, although, as you can see from the past probably 10 minutes of the video, this deck struggles, very much struggles against two things. And those things are counter spells and blood moon. Totally forgot about the blood moon potential when I built this. So there is a very, very easy solution to that. Put more forests. I would go up to like maybe somewhere between six to eight forests. And there you go. You solve your blood moon problem. So that won't be much of a problem. Other problem is ensnaring bridge, which is kind of a thing. You, you won't run into it too much like... If you run into it at all in a prison deck, it's likely just going to be a singleton. Wait, no, 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 never mind. They would have three copies because Karn would grab the fourth one from the sideboard. So yeah, if it's something like that, sometimes they don't have it though. And sometimes they just have the one in the board. So you won't have to fear it bridge too much, but that is a thing you could fear and it will beat you because you're not going to have any way to destroy it. But counter spells are the one gigantic, huge problem and or Teferi. And surprisingly, we ran up against more blue Counterspell-esque decks today than I thought we would. Because lately, I haven't really been running into much Counterspell decks. They've kind of just been, like, running dry. But there's quite a few of them today. And that's, that's where everything goes wrong. And that's why I really think that you might have to go for um, the Basaju package in the board. So I would say the sideboard blast zones could be useful, like the ghost quarters if you're on the draw against Tron and you fear they're going to go turn three Tron Karn. That, that is a problem, so I could see ghost quarters still being good. Radiant Fountain, you can get away without it. Bajuka Bog, you can get away without it because just the Emrakul them and you don't care about their graveyard. Blast zone, I think it's just, it, you crack it on turn four and you're trying to win on turn three, so I don't see that one being too useful. So I would say... That if you just like scrap the whole sideboard and put four copies of Basaju, um, three copies of Tibble's Trickery, and then was you have uh, eight slots left, and you just put eight more Eldrazi Titans. So you put one more Emrakul, you put four Ulamog, the CSS Hungers, and then um, what do you got? Three more slots left. You just do whatever you want. Maybe you could run uh, Void Winnower. Void Winnower could work. Or you run, um, I don't know. I really don't know because maybe maybe you run um, Kozilek Butcher of Truth because it draws you four. So then you could just draw into another another Violent Outburst or something. Another chance to get an Emrakul. Because the unfortunate thing is a Counterspell deck, like a deck with Cryptic Commands and such, will be able to beat a, um, a Eldrazi Titan that isn't Ulamoglis' Hunger or Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn. Because the thing about those is that they um they can disrupt your opponent in some kind of way like ulamog will hit their lands it will exile their lands so that they can't be like bouncing your guy tapping down your guy you know they can't answer it as, as much and then emrakul obviously you take an extra turn and swing immediately however kozilek and ulamog the infinite gyre are definitely more answerable for those blue decks so they're a little bit more risky but yeah, definitely run those other ones for sure. That's what I would say to morph your sideboard into and then just put more forest for Blood Moon. And there you go. I feel like you'd have a little bit more of a chance to combat those. But yeah, overall, just the fact that you straight up destroy anything that isn't blue is just, it just makes this deck nuts. And I really feel like Tibble Trickery will get banned. You never know. Watsy might not do it because they have neglected certain decks in the past and just let them get out of control. Like, Amulet Titan and, you know, Uro, Uro was legal for quite a while. Or not Uro, but yeah, Uro is still legal. I'm talking about Oko. Oko was legal for way longer than it should have been. 
So I, this deck might stick around for quite a bit. I recommend picking it up if you like winning and uh, yeah, doing that Pesaju thing. So that's about it for this one. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to walk in circles here. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more Kaldheim. We're going to be doing a lot more Kaldheim videos here on the channel every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So make sure you hit that subscribe button as to not miss out. Peace. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. It's totally free and really helps out the channel. But if you wanted to go the extra mile, you can check out our Patreon link down below in the description. Patreon is a platform where you can help to financially support the content creators you love. And a big shout out to all of our current Patreon supporters whose names are on screen right now. And an extra special shout out to our top supporters for the month. And another way to support the channel is by supporting our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders. If you want to play some Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code that's on screen right now to save 15%, and you can rent and play all the Magic decks you want. It is what I personally use and how I had filmed this video here today. And if you want to pick up some Magic cards or anything Magic related really, you can pick them up through our deck list link down below. That's our TCGplayer.com link, and anything you purchase through there really ups out the channel. They are the best of the best on the internet when it comes to Magic the Gathering singles, sealed product, and accessories. And that's about it. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.